guys are doing great and welcome to the second part of my trip to Paris applause yes. I'm sorry I ended the first video so abruptly but I was really tired I hope you can understand that since we saw the first video with BTS I think we should start the second video with them too because we're going to the pop-up store yay and please if you're not interested in any way please skip to the point that I tell you to skip but since it was my trip and since I did not want to go to the concert in the first place I would not have the excuse to go with her I'm gonna talk about it okay okay <laughs> we got that covered so on the 4th of june we got to the pop-up store because we have nothing to do at 6 in the morning mm -mm. we got up got dressed we did not eat of course who eats at 6 in the morning some people do and honestly the whole experience was not that bad because we went to hundreds in line when we got there by eight o'clock and the line moved quite fast when it started moving at 10. By 11, we were done with, with the pop-up store. So we were to hundreds, there were a lot of girls. We got to chat with some people. And what's inspiring to me is that, you know, some of them actually decided to go to Korea to study because of BTS, because they were so inspired to learn the culture, to learn the language. So uh, I was really impressed by that. And I know it's not just BTS because of whom people get interested in Korea, South Korea to be precise. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's, it's nice. It's nice that people just broaden their horizons. I, I just think it's cool. But I have to say that Bob Up Store merchandise was not uh, great. Of course, Xenia wanted to buy something for herself and for her sister and she did. I told you we were going to the she bought herself a wallet sorta i mean my mom has this kind of wallet and it came with a purse a beach purse for her sister she bought a pouch i'm so proud of you i'm so very proud of you one thing I was excited for Xenia to get was Una cards because I like Una, I have Una cards and they released, they promoted, they advertised BTS Una cards, but uh, there were none. One good thing uh, from waiting in line was that I got free stuff. Guess what we have? Free stuff. Xenia, are you happy? Yay! Free swag. What I wanna talk about is the organization also it was quite well organized as i told you the line moved quite quickly and when we got in there were a lot of staff mm -hmm. so if i had any questions whatsoever i could easily find a staff member to talk to to ask some questions and uh, in in that particular moment i think they did good i'm so happy <laughs> pop-up store we had some free time we went to get some croissants because Xenia had the bucket list where she needed to get a croissant at a cafe and eat it <laughs> too as for me I did not like croissants that much but there was this one thing uh, filled with chocolate and this thing that thing was delicious the chocolate melted inside was just the right amount and by right amount I mean a lot of it later that day we had tickets to the Eiffel Tower and all the sites tell you that you should plan two hours ahead because of all the waiting all the lines all the elevator rush Xenia say hi <laughs> I wanted to see the twilight personally and Xenia wanted the night lights of Paris. So we decided of course it's the evening and it's gonna be 6. But guess what? There were two things that I did not account for. First, on our way to the Eiffel Tower, suddenly we got caught in hail. Oh, so we have to go to the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> and it's hail! <laughs> And hail, as you see, was 
quite quite huge like the hail itself the ice particles they were huge like if i was standing under that i would get beaten up severely and because of that when we got to the eiffel tower there were not many people without tickets who were waiting in lines to get in and we were the first to ride the elevator to the first floor by seven o'clock we were already on level one and that was way faster than i expected and the second thing i did not do proper research on was the time when the sun goes down at nine o'clock it's not dark yet it's not even remotely dark we had to wait till 11. so bottom line is we spent five hours on the Eiffel Tower because Xenia refused to leave without seeing the night lights of Paris. Also, we booked our tickets in advance and I wanted to save some money because there is an option where you can go to the Eiffel Tower to the second level at least by foot using the stairs. But the thing is, the online site does not allow you to purchase that kind of ticket because you only buy it at the Eiffel Tower. We're finally at the top! Yeah, well, not at the top, top, but the second floor is up. Yes, we're stupid enough to make a day. Yes. A little? I want to go there! Up, up there, up there, up there. <laughs> Это потому что я готова была проситься за этими пашками. Это потому что я готова была проситься за этими пашками. Это похоже на какую-то будку. Сейчас будет куча людей. Но мы были первыми сегодня. Селфи тайм. Мы были первыми сегодня. <laughs> I saw the sign that told us that we cannot get to the top because of the weather. They closed it for some time, but then they opened it and we got to the top. Yeah. For the people who are afraid of heights and who don't want to get to the top, I personally am not afraid of heights. I don't enjoy it that much, but I'm not afraid of it. But for people who are afraid of it, I can, I can say that it's not that much of a difference like the second level and the top and the top i think it gives you the full experience of the eiffel tower because at the summit you get to see the apartment like the secret apartment of the constructor of the eiffel tower of the architect of the eiffel tower and i think even if you're scared i think you should overcome your fear please and go to the top because it's so worth it You'll, you'll be happy you did that, honestly. No, I'm scared. And I know that the view from the top and from the second floor doesn't feel that much different. And yes, you can stay on the second floor. But, you know, with the top, it's just a little bit different. And if you can, like, push yourself, it's gonna be worth it. It's all protected. It's all protected by the hatch, the metal hatch. You will not fall, like... <laughs> no, 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 in no way you will be allowed to, like, put yourself in danger at any level so please go to the top Может быть, если бы я не выпила этого вина, я бы сюда и не полезла. One more thing I want to talk about is this atrocity of a building me ruining all the view of Paris because Paris is made out of limestone and it's particularly beige. I read the history about it, Montparnasse building, they should have removed the gate of metro and suddenly the area was open for building and 
they decided to build this. So yes, it has a beautiful viewpoint where you can again see Paris, but why do you need that if you have the Eiffel Tower, which is sort of the same height and like at the same place? I think it's a monstrosity and I think uh, it should not be there. <laughs> Oh, there's nothing like sparkling Eiffel Tower. Yes. You can go down using the stairs and we had to do that because all the size told us yeah you have to do it it's such an amazing experience yada 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 Видео нужно заговорить. Мой бог. Do you see how it's sparkling? This is all for you, my darlings. And it was not hard. It's not difficult, honestly. You don't have to be preparing to run a marathon to get to the second floor of the Eiffel Tower using the stairs. The stairs are quite comfortable. They're not uh, very steep, and the ascent is just all right. The descent, of course, is even easier. And this is where it should have ended that day. Xenia got her night uh, lights off Paris and we got down and we were going home. We're tired. And the next day we had lover. Yes. single ticket online except for the catacombs and lower was no exception to this and for 17 years you get access to a lower museum at a specific time get to the place on time and you get in without waiting in lines and in june i knew that the lines would be enormous we wanted to spend in Louvre the whole day but of course you cannot do that because honestly you get a little tired i was already done with everything with life after five hours but on our way out of Louvre we spent two more hours there because Xenia refused to leave the museum at the same time point when we left the Eiffel Tower. So she figured if we spend five hours on the Eiffel Tower, we should spend more in Louvre. And she was right, honestly. We only visited several halls, several expositions. The first was Mona Lisa, Xenia dragged me to that, but you know, I was not like <laughs> refusing to go. The second was uh, Ancient Sculptures, uh, then we went to Napoleon's Quarters, and then uh, before that, before that was Egyptian Hall, Z halls and last one was Napoleon's quarters. I'm very happy with my choice. Seven hours well spent. If you can't splurge, get the audio guide because with that everything is so much easier 
and it costs three or five euros per person and of course you can share but Ksenia wanted to get one in Russian and I wanted to get one in English we did not want to spend five euros each so we decided to not get one whatsoever but if you can share just get one and just be done with it the map itself is quite complicated but the lower itself is quite complicated construction to get around and even after the fourth hour we were <laughs> still kind of lost and still trying to navigate in our experience you cannot get a good decent app that guides you through louver that is free you only have to use the map which is free yes you know when you get used to it ah who am i kidding it's it's terrible <laughs> what's in me was those cards with printed information about the hall that you are in and i read them quite frequently they were <laughs> very informative too too informative for my taste but for the lack of anything else you know you read what you can get so this is the first hall on our way to mona lisa that is dedicated to a religious theme and i'm not a fan of that i'm an impressionist girl myself i like like this more so religious is um I just don't enjoy it that much, especially like when it's too much of it. I read in the sites that some people just don't want to like see it, see it, but they want to be in the same room with it. And I can understand that, uh, maybe. The closest you can get to that painting is not even your arm's length. No, no, no. We finally got to Mona Lisa, and as you see, there are just a few people there who want to see <laughs> that painting. What's important about this hall was that we lost each other. <laughs> Xenia wanted to get close to it because she wanted to get sweet, sweet pictures of it. <laughs> there she is! <laughs> and we did not know that once you get to the velvet rope, you cannot go back where I was standing. I was standing on the point where this footage takes place. Once you get close, you have to only get behind this like part wall because there's a security guy who does not allow you to go back. We did not know that, of course, and I did not know that until I got a little bit closer to this crowd of people. Xenia was waiting for me behind that wall. I was waiting for her here from this point. Xenia had the internet, I did not have the internet. After some time, of course, I went to find Xenia behind that wall and at the same time she came back she walked around the whole exposition to find me at that point it was one of the most important thing to just uh, find the internet which is not everywhere yeah but we did it, it uh, it's all good we did we find each other and yeah Юлия, расскажите ваши ощущения. Вы находитесь в Лувре. Прониклись искусством. the sculpture, a ancient sculpture, and for some reason I thought Michelangelo created Venus de Milo, but no, 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 it's a Greek architecture and it's ancient Greece architecture and it's an unknown artist and uh, now I know that and now my mom is not mad at me <laughs> anymore. <laughs> On our way to Egyptian exposition, we went to this little hall and it's one of my favorite places in Louvre. In here, I finally learned that Louvre was first a fortress and not a museum. Yura, let's see some kind of disgust. In here, you can see actual walls of the fortress that Louvre once was, and you can touch them, and this is so cool. And if you see those two people trying to find gold, no, no, there's nothing there. <laughs> In the 12th century, it was a fortress, but after that, uh, by the 16th century, it was uh, converted into a royal palace. And after that, it became a museum in like 18th century, yes, 1783, I think. Charles V. Aha! Uh -huh. So after the 
Egyptian hall uh, in which we saw a mummy, a real mummy of a boy, oh, which was so cool, we went to Napoleon quarters and I cannot even say that these are just rooms, no, they're quarters because they're so magnificent, there's such a baroque style in everything, it's so luxurious and it's so expensive. <laughs> And it's just so grand and when you walk into that you just feel like a not like even a princess not, not not like even a queen no no you feel like a king that was one of the most magnificent things that we saw and you just stand there in awe and oh god it's just amazing the drapes the curtains the chandeliers the moldings on on the walls on the ceiling everything is just exquisite thank you guys so much for watching and uh, I hope this time I would not end abruptly like I did that I hope I would edit it till the end I'll see you in the next video yeah bye guys <laughs>